Hi, I'm Sean Dixon. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Sean Eby. Welcome to my crib. Hi, just to clarify, I don't actually live here. Now, this is gonna be a very quick tour, hopefully, so hope you like it. So, straight from the door, I've got my Owen clamp rack. I think it's quite obvious that I like Owen. And here I've got my power tool kind of station. I've got a belt sander down there, some routers, an orbital sander, a scroll saw that I rarely use. Sorry, Jamie Page. Now on top I've got my chainsaw that, I, the reason I have on top because I like looking at it. I don't use it as much as I would like. I've got my lovely sticker board and above my power tool, station I've got my hand tools. So I've got a lot of Lee Nelson tools which I really like. I've also got a couple of Veritas marking gauges which I highly recommend. So starting on the left with my squares, this square I use a lot for um, checking my bandsaw blade is square to the table. This smaller square is perfect for marking out dovetails and just joinery. This third square is perfect for making sure my table saw blade is square because it's just below the thickness of the teeth. Now, this full Oh, you're not doing them all, are you? Yeah. I'll move on. So, moving on to my workbench, I did an unboxing and a review video of this, so all the stuff I talk about in this video, I'll put links down below if you want to check out those individual videos. Got, I'm working on a couple of cookie chopping boards at the moment, which is quite exciting. Now, opposite my workbench, I used to have a pile of wood here, but now I've moved my lathe, because where my lathe was, I'm interested in getting a new tool that I'll talk about later. Now this is Record Power Cornet Herald, great lathe, the headstock turn so I can turn wider pieces. Um, yeah, highly recommend and get a variable speed lathe. Now onto my first wood storage collection. I made this storage cart in my previous video, so if you want to watch that, check it out, link in the description. And I've got my man-made board kind of pile here. The tip if you didn't want to make a shelving unit, I just screwed this lip on a board down below so I can kind of wedge as much wood as I like and this lip is holding it all together. So, probably the easiest storage you can do. Okay, so some more wood storage is I just made this kind of shelf inside my workbench because that was wasted space. If you want to see how I made that, that's the same video as the wood cart one. That, I'm able to store so much wood, it's so helpful. And now, moving on to, actually, what do you think this is? Uh, bandsaw. It actually is, well done. <laughs> if you want to see a review video on this, uh, just comment down below and I will do one. I've got a lot of stuff I can talk about and some features that I found that I think would be good to tell you. So let me know if you're interested in that. But anyway, great bit of kit and uh, I am interested in getting a sliding table in the future that you can attach onto the side. Would be great for cross cutting. I've got my dust extractor here. Uh, I've got one hose that is permanently connected to the bandsaw. And I've got this long hose here that goes to all the other machinery in the workshop. Um, I just have to, you know, take it off that machine and plug it onto the new one whenever I'm changing tool. It's a bit of hassle, but I've got used to it now. Now you may notice with the extractor being in this location, I'm losing some ripping capacity. I rarely do a lot of sheet goods, so I don't have the fence that far out quite often. But when I do, this extractor is on wheels, so I can really easily wheel it out, and then I'll have the full you know, capacity of the outfeed area. Now moving on to my planar thicknesser. This is a record power planar thicknesser. It's the biggest one they do. It's a straight cutter block, and in the future I do want to get a spiral head cutter block. There are so many advantages of that. I don't need to tell you. Uh, you probably already know. Do you want to know anything about it? I don't know. What do you use it on? What do I use it on? Uh, you plain wood. <laughs> There's not much I can talk about this machine. You probably all know what it is. Plain wood on it. 
Now moving on, this is kind of a different section of the workshop because I'm using a different extractor. This is my uh, Dewalt Miter Saw. I've upgraded from an Evolution I used to have. I do want to get a Bosch Axiglide one because you have this new feature where they don't use these guide bars. It's kind of like a, a hinge mechanism so you save a lot of space. As you can see how far away from the wall it is, it eats up a lot of space in the workshop. So I do want to upgrade to the Bosch one in the future. This is my Trend Router Table. I've got the T11 router in there which is very powerful and perfect for a rack table. I uh, do need to make an adapter in the future for it because the hose on the extractor is 100 mil and the outlet on this one is, I think, 50 or 75. So I need a wood turn adapter. Maybe that'll be a video if you're interested in how I'd do that. What should you keep in the fridge? Um, I don't actually want the fridge in here. That's my parents' fridge. They don't even have anything in it. Why, is, why do they, you know, need it in here? Take up too much space. Um, and it smells. Can you smell? <laughs> okay, this is the sanding area. I've got my belt sander here. Some people call it a linisher, horizontal edge sander, or just a belt sander. It is a great bit of kit. If you have this one, I highly recommend getting the, the thick fabric belt ones. I did used to have the paper ones, and they bowed out. I'll show some pictures on the screen now, if I have any. I think the belt was under too much tension, and it ruined it, and it ruined your work because it didn't sand flat anymore. But the thicker belts, are staying flat against the wall. Perfect machine. All right, and now this is one of my nicest bits of kit. This is the Paramatic drum sander. I did an unboxing of this, and I also did an unboxing of the edge sander, if you want to check that out. Links in the description. The issue with drum sanders, as you may know, is there's not a lot of sandpaper to be used. You can, Jet have just brought out an oscillating drum sander where the drum actually moves back and forth, so you don't get those sanding streak marks in it which is a great invention. You can get a thickness sander if you had a much bigger workshop, which is a big belt sander. So you've got a lot more abrasive to wear and it won't burn the wood. But anyway, I love this. I couldn't live without it in the workshop. Now, I don't really show a lot in the videos because this used to be very ugly. So what used to be up here was guarding equipment and car washing stuff and non-woodworking items. But now we've moved that into a shed outside, which is great. And now I've got more wood storage. So I've got a bit of Curly maple there. Got a bit of bog oak here, which is 7,000 years old. That was dug up in Transylvania. I was given this by a friend, so thank you very much, Jack. And I've got some ash I milled up on the top. If you want to see the milling up video, I will link it down below. I'm going to do a bit more milling in the future, so look forward to those videos. All right, now moving on to this bit of kit. Daniel, if that was the bandsaw, what do you think this is? No idea. Guess, just guess. Table saw. This is a new addition to the workshop. I just did an unboxing of it, so check that out if you're interested. I will do a review video of this pretty soon. I just want to use it a bit more so then I know what's wrong and what's good with it. And here I've got some wood cookies. Now that is what I am going to be milling up, which I can't wait to do. I'm going to make some very nice coffee tables and some side tables with them with a nice ingrained top. I think that'd be amazing. All right, now moving on to the shelves. I have done a big clean. It is pretty organized. I've got my screws and hardware down this section, then my glue, and then my finishes. I do like chestnut finishes. That's why I have a lot. And on the top shelf, I've got my bandsaw blades near my bandsaw. I've got some chainsaw bars. I've got some wood chucks. I've got a couple of jigs, circle cutting jig a steady rest for the lathe, and a spline jig, which will be a video very soon uh, for cutting splines in picture frames or boxes. And I've got a very nice picture frame video coming out very soon, so look out for that. Okay, so I haven't found the best place for the pillar drill yet. You know, I don't actually use a pillar drill that much in the workshop, so I'm gonna leave it here. I do need to adjust the table because that's not square to the chuck at the moment. And I've got some bits and bobs here. I've got some more wood store down below. I've got a grinder here for sharpening. I've got sandpaper and some masking tape. Now I do want to make some racks on the wall because it's just taken up unnecessary surface space. But I feel like I could make, you know, a holder on the wall for masking tape and sandpaper, which would be a good idea. So yeah, and I've got a radio back there that I put on when I'm working. So I mentioned earlier that I moved the lathe here from this location because I was interested in getting a new tool and that eventually will be a spindle molder. I think I've got enough space here to put it in. Um, the more and more tools I get, 
I'm not gonna have a lot of space left in the workshop. But I really do wanna get a spinner molder. Another bit of machinery I would like is a bobbin sander for doing inside curves. I would also put that on a mobile base like the pillar drill and I can put that down the sanding area. They are expensive, so I won't be able to get them soon, but just to let you know what the next purchases will be in the shop. All right, so I've shown you all the main things on the shop. Now I'm gonna show you some things that you don't probably see in the video a lot, and that is this very messy shelf. I was given these very old planes by my first woodwork teacher, Mr. Norman, who got me into woodwork. They're not very functional, but I do like looking at them. I've also got a lot of clamps in the rafters of this roof that obviously you won't get to see. I've got some parallel jaw clamps, some F clamps. I've got some sash clamps up there as well. On this big metal beam holding up the roof of the workshop, I've actually uh, put some of the chess pieces I've made. And I think that's quite a nice little collection. And in terms of some pieces of work I have in the workshop, I've got a little bit of carving in front of that wood cookie. That's you could call that a bit of art. And right in front of my chainsaw that you will see often is this bit of carving that I put in front of a piece of tree bark. I like the contrast between refined detail and kind of nature. Yeah, beautiful. I just want to thank my patrons. Without them, I wouldn't have a workshop like this and I wouldn't be able to keep on producing these videos for you. So thank you so much. If you want to help support the channel and get early access to my YouTube videos and also Patreon only videos, all the information will be down below. So I hope you enjoyed that quick tour of the workshop. I've got a lot of great making videos coming up, so stay tuned. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. If you've got any questions, comment down below and I'll leave you on the lovely view I have from my workshop.